Chapter 1 The sun on her skin and the blue in the sky made it the kind of day for getting out and doing something positive. Brooke, though, was out to make trouble. It's good for my bank account, at least. Rent was due, and her funds had dwindled to an all-time low. It was time to make some fast cash. The park was teeming with people. Young couples walking, families stretched out on picnic blankets with their kids, and dogs freaking everywhere. Rook breezed right past them, headed for the back of the park. That's where the tables were. Rows of stone tables and benches were set up, the checkered board, a permanent fixture on the tabletops. Some of the older regulars were out playing, and they nodded to her as she passed. They wouldn't have been down for the kind of game Rook had in mind. She scanned the players, looking, looking, there. A bunch of college-age kids, mostly boys, were playing livelier games of speed chess. Perfect. Adopting a smile and shoving her hands in her hoodie's pockets, she wandered over. Her heart pounded in her chest, and thank goodness for the breeze, because she was starting to sweat. Planning something like this was easy. Actually going through with it was frightening. One of the guys picked up on her immediately. Hey, she said, beaming at him. Hey, what can I do for you? He sauntered over, ignoring the game he'd just been watching with keen interest. She flipped her hair over her shoulder and hoped to hell that these weren't the kind of players to keep up with the sport outside of their small clubs. Well, I heard that there was chess here. I'm just learning to play, so I thought I'd come out and see if I could practice against some people. His condescending smile rankled Rook, but she didn't let it show. If anything, it helped boost her confidence. Fleecing people wasn't high on her bucket list, so she was glad the guys were going to be jerks. It took the sting out of it. Sure, sweetheart, but you should go over there. He nodded at the older gentleman playing and tried them. Our games can get a bit intense. He waggled his eyebrows as he said it. She giggled while imagining her eyes rolling in her head. Please. How so? Well, sometimes we like to put money on the games, just to make the stakes a bit higher. Rook gave a gasp she hoped sounded real. You bet on chess? I mean, isn't it, like, boring? That's why we like to raise the stakes. I'm Hank. He held out his hand, and she shook it. Her palms were moist, but he didn't seem to notice. Wanna watch? Sure. I'm Rook. His eyebrows went up. Rook? Like the chess piece? That's a cool coincidence. I wish, she huffed. Rook like the bird. My mom is an ornithologist. Oh, what? She studies birds? Oh, Hank laughed. Got it. That's, uh, interesting. It was interesting, but he didn't care, and she wasn't inclined to enlighten him. What was important was he didn't recognize her face or name, and he was buying her act. I'm cool as a cucumber. It was the mantra she used at tournaments when the stress started to build up. Not so much. So, they're playing? And just like that, Hank ushered her in. Rook tried to ignore the hand that touched her shoulder occasionally or lingered on her back as he steered her into place. She needed the money more than she needed to let him know that they both ate pussy, and clearly, this was the way he was going to lower his guard. The matches were going quickly. Rook liked speed chess. The rush of having to think on her feet made her more focused. Are you having trouble keeping up? Hank asked, before launching into a play-by-play. -play. As far as commentators went, he wasn't that bad. He knew the game and had a familiarity with the players that helped him give insight into what they were probably thinking and their play styles, which in turn meant Rook had insight into those things now as well. Okay, she said cautiously. I think I'd like to try it. May I play one of the losers? Sure, Hank agreed. When it was her turn, 
The loser had a goofy smile. Playing against a pretty girl helped get him out of his funk. Rook sat down and waited. He went first. A king's gambit. Amateur. But she played into it. Despite knowing how the game would go, she puzzled and pushed the clock and, at the last minute, set her king up for a checkmate. Her opponent won, but his cocky smile had faltered a bit. That wasn't as easy as I was expecting. Well, she laughed nervously, it was harder than I was expecting. I've been playing a while and clearly still need the practice. One by one, others challenged her. She lost more than she won. Slowly, surely, she became a magnet for those who wanted to show off, to teach her some moves, or who just wanted to feel better about themselves. It was more difficult than she thought to keep her skills under wraps. Once the clock was on and the board was set up, her competitive nature shone through. Keeping it tapped down was more stressful than trying to convince everyone she was an idiot. On the side, the final players of their makeshift round robin were competing with $500 on the line. Rook won her game, narrowly. That was so lucky, she rejoiced, jumping up and down clapping. I want to play winner. Hank gave her his now signature condescending smile. I don't think you're ready for that, sweetheart. Now, this part of the negotiation wasn't that much different from the game. Rook had come in with a plan, and so far everything was playing exactly the way she wanted. I know. Here's the thing, Hank. I'm learning so much already. I think losing to the winner might help me the most. I admire that, babe. I do. But those guys are only here to play for money, not for fun. She bit her lip. Well, I could play for money. It's kind of like paying for a teacher, right? That's a lot of money, more than I think you're willing to part with. There was a cheer that stopped the conversation for a moment as a winner emerged. He was young and eager and shaking everyone's hands. Perfect. Rook was close. Hank motioned to the winner. Paul, this is Rook. She wants to play you for winner. Is she any good? Hank raised his eyebrows and shrugged. The message was clear. She was just okay. I can bet, she said, reaching in her pocket. She pulled out the last of her cash. It was $700 in rolled 20s. Rook had emptied her account that morning. Is this enough? Hank's eyes went wide, and Paul licked his lips. I, I can't take that kind of money. Rook heard his hesitation and pounced. You're not just taking it. You have to win it, Paul. Now, I've lost more than I've won today, but maybe I'll win now. She put some challenge in her voice. Bring it on, Paul. He did. Nodding, he sat down and put his own cash on the table. Double or nothing. Winner takes home $1,400. Enough for rent and groceries. Maybe a pint of ice cream to celebrate her first step into criminal behavior. While they set up the board, some of the loud talking had brought over other parkgoers. Rook had an audience. She loved it. It added to the thrill and challenge. Yeah, right. Like, this is going to be hard. Paul even let her start. White. What a gentleman. Soon to be a poor gentleman. She moved her first piece. She had been opening English the whole day. Now, she went with a bird's opening. Hank frowned, but she ignored him as she hit her timer. It was on. The crowd murmured at her speed. For each of Paul's moves, she was faster. It didn't take long for her to put the pressure on his king. Soon, he was just dancing on the board, trying to evade capture. Rook was ruthless. Checkmate. She smiled, feeling good. Paul stared at the board, but Hank realized what had happened as she pocketed the cash. You fucking hustled us? 
His anger was intense, but she was so high from the wind, it no longer scared her. I did indeed. Thanks for the lovely afternoon, guys. A stranger came up. She'd seen him watching the last few games, probably just a casual observer. Wait, you just won all that cash at chess? I didn't know you could bet on these games. It's a bit off the record, if you get what I'm saying, Rook winked. But these guys were ripe for the picking. The stranger nodded. Congratulations. Thanks. Rook stopped when she saw the badge and handcuffs. You should have let me finish, young lady. Congratulations, you're under arrest. The officers weren't gentle, putting Rook in the back of their car. She clipped her head on the door on the way in. Ow! Jesus, be careful! They ignored her protest, though, and the locked door slammed shut. I've just been arrested. The thought felt like it should come with more surprise. Like, oh no, I've been arrested. Or, damn it, this will ruin my life. But it didn't. It just came as a fact. Yes, really, you've been arrested. Okay. Of all the ways she'd pictured this day ending, this hadn't been a factor. Because who got arrested for freaking chess? Rook pressed her head against the back of the seat. The car rocked as two officers got in the front. The gentle start of the engine. The forward motion that should be making her sick with worry. But she was still reeling in shock. It made her numb for the ride. Numb was good because panic wasn't something Rook handled well. Then again, she would probably have to tell her parents about this eventually, and they would definitely have a cow. Thank you, 90s slang. Ah, yes, there was the cinching knot of anxiety that had been missing. The officers were talking in the front seat. Rook wasn't really listening, but she caught the gist of it. They'd figured out who she was. They couldn't believe it. Did chess grandmasters commit crimes? Weren't they too busy being the smartest person in the room? And, like clockwork, there it was. How does someone so smart do something so stupid? One of the officers asked, more to his partner than to her. It didn't matter. She'd heard it all before. Because I'm bored, was the shameful truth. It was shameful because it was cliché. Because she should have known better. Because everyone probably feels like they're pigeonholed at some point in their lives, so why was Rook any different? Maybe it was because, with all the problem-solving skills she had, she never got courage or social niceties or the other things that make a person likable. Bored was her predictable answer, and she'd had a lot of practice turning it into a thick, defensive wall. They took her mugshot, and Rook had to admit when she saw it that she looked good as a criminal. Her shaggy caramel brown hair was full of a natural wave and body and made her look like she tried when she didn't. The profile section of her mugshot showed off the angular, high cheekbones and sharp chin. Rook smiled for the mugshot because, if she was lucky, she could frame it later and give it to her mom when the shock had worn off and they could laugh about it. God, I hope she can laugh about it. There was baggage between Rook and her parents, but not the kind that made getting arrested something they'd expect. Of all the things she'd done to disappoint them, this would definitely claim winner. She was escorted to an office, not to a cell, and Rook found that some small part of her was relieved. They probably did the cuffs and mugshot just to scare her then. Now she'd be let off the hook. Her parents wouldn't have to know, and while she'd still be out the rent money, she wouldn't be completely boned. A female officer came in and sat across from Rook. She was older, but in shape, and Rook appreciated that she didn't have a fake smile on. The one thing she hated more than being treated differently because she was a chess star was being pandered to like she was a child. Her hands trembled a bit because, let's face it, this was scary. 
But seeing a female officer helped, and if Rook was honest, maybe this would be over quickly. Here's the story I got, and you can tell me if it's what happened, okay? The woman began, not even introducing herself. Sure, Rook agreed. The officer began listing the eyewitness accounts that had been gathered while Rook had been put in cuffs and read her rights. You came to the park around 11 in the morning and found some of the regulars playing chess. You hovered around, probably acting cute and dumb. The officer stops and narrowed her eyes, piercing Rook with her gaze to let her know what she thought of that. Witnesses say you played them by pretending to be a beginner before you placed a large bet openly with Mr. Paul Danforth. Is that right? Rook nodded, the knot in her gut tightening. She was betting that Hank and Paul would get their stories exact since her win had stung them quite a bit. Yep, that's it. You're supposed to say I need to talk to my lawyer, the officer replied. I was hoping that if I was up front, you'd see my record, which is totally clean, and how nervous I am, totally nervous, and maybe give me a pass? Since gambling laws are gray anyway, so I don't even know how much my crime would hold up in court. You led well, but probably not great to mention gray laws. I get that this is your first offense, but a first offense is still an offense. You broke the law. I'm giving you a ticket and recommending jail time. You can contest it in court, and you're right. The laws are gray, but it's going to cost you. Rook looked at the ticket. It was more than she'd have left over after rent, and that wasn't beginning to touch court fees. Um, got any recommendations for a good lawyer? Probation. What a joke. Her lawyer had been good, and Rook really owed her parents for paying the fees. She'd have to pay them back eventually, but it still hadn't been good enough to get her a full out-of-trouble card. Her probation officer was a petite, perky officer named Betty Thomas. Officer Betty had just shaken Rook's hand and said, see you next week, Miss Black, before walking away, leaving Rook standing beside her best friend, Rooster. Jesus, Rooster whistled. That's a great-looking probation officer. You lucky bitch. Rook rolled her eyes. Officer Betty isn't really my type. I'm the one who likes to put people in handcuffs, if you know what I'm saying. This earned her a quick jab to the shoulder. Drop it, Rookie. I'm your friend, remember? I know you aren't some badass criminal bitch. Just because you finally got in some trouble doesn't make you the newest member of Orange is the New Black. You're just a lovable, clever little coward. Ouch. She turned to eye her friend. At six foot five, he was tall. At a buck eighty, gangly. His hair was long and his red beard thin. The red hair and beard were reminiscent of Shaggy from Scooby-Doo, but his ability to puff his chest and get mean with anyone who picked on his friends earned him the nickname Rooster. Cocky and protective, and Rook knew she was damned lucky to have him. Still, I'm not a coward. I just don't want to do things everyone expects of me. His arm draped over her shoulders, and Rook was tugged into an awkward side hug. You're the only one who thinks those things, boo. And my parents, and my coach, and basically everyone who isn't you. Rooster planted a kiss on the top of her head. Well... Now we can just focus on what's next, which is you not getting into any more trouble. I wasn't looking for trouble. I was just looking to pay for rent. You got more bills now. What are you going to do? Rook sighed. This is the thought that had been keeping her up at night since her arrest. I'm fucked, Roost. The only way to get the kind of money I need right now is, uh, turny, and... The next one, with a big enough pot, is in Stockholm, in three months. I haven't played in over a year, and I don't have three months' rent, much less money for a plane ticket. Ask your parents. They just paid all my legal fees. I can't ask them again. You know why they paid them, right? I'm going to owe them now, and they can cash it in. 
or, and maybe I'm crazy here, they love you. And seeing their only daughter, who has been a poster child of excellent behavior and world-renowned chess player, get arrested and struggling is hard. They're just helping you the only way they know how. What a reminder. Rook's mind bubbled and thoughts began bouncing around, refusing order. Yeah, I know. I've just dug a hole deeper than I know how to get out of. He sighed before stopping and swinging Rook to face him. Okay, here's the deal. I've been tutoring on top of teaching, and I know the local university has a chess club that's looking to be competitive. I'll put your name out and set up the sessions for 40 or 15 hour. I'll loan you the money for three months rent. You're in it deep, rookie, and I want to help. That's too much, Rooster. But her heart was already relaxing, her breaths coming in a little easier. If he'd do this for her, she might actually be able to save up enough to get to Stockholm. Tutoring sucked in a major way, but it was practice, too. Did Rook want to re-enter the chess tournament scene after over a year off? Nope. Did she have much of a choice? Hell no.